Hello everyone. My name is David Zeldin and I'm the Director of Global Sales and Marketing at MUV Interactive. If you're watching this, it probably means that you've received your Bird. This session is going to help get you up, running, and comfortable using Bird. In today's session, I will initially assume that you've managed to set everything up, but at the end, we will cover some basic setup issues as well. So what are we going to be covering today? I'm going to start with the out-of-the-box experience you most likely have gone through already, including what is in the box and the helpful setup videos that you saw after installing and that you can always refer to at any time. Then I'm going to jump back into what most of us are here for, how to use BIRD. I'll go into the most used functions and the hand movements and motion control to execute them. I will proceed to follow up with these functions with real live examples on different applications to show how you can apply them in your everyday use with BIRD. Some of these will be actual apps or programs and some of this will be showing how we use BIRD to navigate through our content remotely. From there, I'll go into the software side of BIRD or the GUI, Graphic User Interface. This is where we can do the setup, calibration, control, sensitivity of our movements and manage gesture control. Inside the box, okay, let's take a look at the out of the box experience here now. So inside the box, you have three things. You've got the base unit, the bird itself, and the cradle and charger. The base unit simply needs to be connected to a USB outlet and receiving power. Any outlet in the room or even a power bank will do the trick. If you plan to use touch, you'll probably want to already have the base unit in such a place that is facing the interactive area. We'll go into that a bit later. For the initial setup, you'll have different short video clips pop up and explain how to set up. These videos are always available just two clicks away. The first video is how to set up in the base unit in BIRD. The second video is how to use BIRD. And the third and last video tells you how to activate touch. Each video is just about 30 seconds long with a control bar so that you can pause and go back if you need to. When we go over the GUI, I'll show how a click on support brings you to the videos. I will start demonstrating BIRD with showing you how we can touch the surface and draw. Now, each of these demonstrations require software programs. I'll tell you the name of each program. Many are compatible with Windows 8 or higher, and all of them are available on the Windows Store very quickly. Today, we're going to look at Explain Everything, Book Bazaar Reader, and Planner 5D. Let's get started. First program I work with is called Explain Everything. Now, there are other whiteboard or paint programs that you can use as well. We're agnostic when it comes to that. But pay attention that your hand should be flat or close to flat on the surface. The bottom of the surface of the bird or the glider should be touching the board. Uh, with the bird, I moved it to marker. And now I'm able to easily just write straight here okay, on the board. So what I just showed you here, we can actually see um, back here on the presentation. You should have your hand relatively flat and your palm should be parallel to the surface as we see on the left. It should not be as if you're holding a pen or a marker like we see on the right. This is the case for everything related to touch, not just drawing. Want to move the cursor? A slight pinch of your thumb in the slider is all it takes. If we look at the picture on the presentation, we could see that the thumb is ever so slightly touching the bottom curved part of the glider. Just like you need to put your hand on a mouse in order to move it with bird, you need to touch your thumb to the glider. Gently, gently, and then start moving it. Here we could see my hand, and if we look at the screen, I've moved back to explain everything. I actually uh, changed the background here. We have the background changed, and here I'm going into a figure eight, okay? Going up and down. So we see as the cursor moves, as my hand is also moving. Okay? What do you do when you want to select an object with your computer and mouse? You click it. It's exactly the same with BIRD, which makes it all the most, most more intuitive. Clicking with BIRD means pressing gently with your thumb onto the bottom of the slider. We see the visual back here on the slide. The movement is not a rough run. Okay? Pushing too hard may cause your hand to like jerk up like this a little bit, and then you're not really clicking where you want to be. It might take just a little bit of practice, but if you take the bird and sit with it, not in front of any screen, and you play just with the clicking and listen to it, you'll get a clear understanding of what the soft click or half click is. There is pressure placed and the thumb stops, and then additional pressure needs to be placed to get that full click. 
A after soft click will work better for selecting objects. Just like we double click on the mouse to open program, it's exactly the same with Bird. With a double click, it'll work with a double soft click, but this might be difficult for some, and in any case, a full double click will do the trick. So remember, click and double click are the same as with your standard mouse. The thing to remember is to do the click gently, or as we call it, a soft click. Let's see this thing in action. I'll do three different activities to show you how it works. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do here, uh, turn the page in what we have up here called Book Bazaar Reader. Now, first of all, take a look. My hand is moving very slowly, okay? And we can actually see also the page on the book is also very slow, so we could see the control that we can get here. Now also, I'm gonna take a couple steps back. Okay, we can get pretty, pretty far away, uh, 10 meters, 30 yards, something like that, and we have complete control over turning the page in a book. Okay, now I'm gonna show you uh, another program here. We're gonna see how we can move um, objects from point A to point B. I'm gonna go into something called Planner 5D. Okay, so here, for example, I, I do a, what we call that soft click, okay, and I'm gonna move the couch over here. Let's say we want the couch out of the room, okay? So I can move the object around to wherever I want. I'm also gonna take a sticky note. So let's say I'm working in, um, in, a, in a planning uh, program, okay? I'm gonna uh, take, for example, this sticky note, meet about the latest video, and move it around over here. So we can easily, just with that click, and then remember we talked about how we move the cursor just like we move a mouse. Okay, so just a moment ago, I talked to you guys about how we uh, do a double click. Um, so the double click here is gonna be the exact same as we do on a mouse. So over here, I move over the, uh, the mouse and we go over here to this, uh, we're going over here to this uh, Excel and I double click on the Excel and voila, we just opened a, uh, we just opened an Excel by doing a double click. Let's learn a little bit about the touchpad. Let me explain. When you're holding a smartphone in your hand, you have the thumb uh, that navigating the screen itself, and you have the home button. That's exactly what we've built here in Bird. That's the touch screen. You control a great deal with your thumb, and I've actually been and will continue to be using it through the entire presentation. What can we do with the touchpad? Quite a bit. Let's get started. Just tap and hold the pad for a few moments, as we see here on the left slide and we're gonna to get to a menu that you normally get to with a right click, which I just did. Swiping the touchpad up or down is like scrolling on a scroll bar. Like on a mouse, the action can be sensitive to what program I am in. So for example, it may also do zooming in and zooming out in certain cases where this action would be the same with a mouse. So again, swiping up and down, okay, swiping up and down is like scrolling. Swiping down will do one other thing, but you're gonna to have to keep listening to me in order to find out a bit later. Let's see how swiping up and down will zoom me in and out in certain programs. I'm gonna do it now in Planner uh, 5D. So we go back here into Planner 5D where I uh, moved some things earlier. And now, okay, if we look at my hand, okay, I'm zooming in, zooming out, and we see on the screen that it zooms in and out at the same time. So again, Okay, now swiping left or right will do one of two things, depending on where you are. Take a look at what I'm doing, okay? I can actually toggle between programs, okay, that's what I'm doing uh, here. And if I, go into, uh, if I go into Chrome and I'm swiping right, I go between the different tabs, okay? So that's swiping right and swiping left. Now, if I go back into the PowerPoint, okay, which I have right behind me here, okay, now I'm gonna go ahead, and back. Swipe right for next in PowerPoint or toggling to the next tab and swipe left to go back in the last slide or to a previous tab or the tab on your left. Let's say you want to escape a program or get the same functionality as pressing the escape key. To do this, you just click on the home button. It can be very convenient, so remember that in order to escape, just click on the home button. Okay, so I'm doing it right here and now I get to the home screen. Now the next one is very convenient and handy. It's my personal favorite. A double click on the home button will display all of the open applications. Let's see what it does here, okay? I've been using it the whole time. I double clicked on the home button and now all of my, all of my uh, open applications are open. And then, okay, I can swipe right and left, 
Okay, and remember I told you that swiping down does one other thing, but you're gonna have to kind of listen to me to know what it does. So here, I'm gonna do it. Okay, I swipe right, and then I swipe down to go into the program that I wanna go into. So again, that's, I know it, uh, it was a lot, so I'm gonna do it one more time. I double click here on the home button. All of my applications come up. I swipe right or swipe left, okay, like I'm doing right now. And then, if I wanna go into Excel, I swipe, swipe down. Before we move into the next part of the webinar, we have just one more function. In many cases, we wanna just go back to the desktop and we do this on our computers by clicking at the lower right hand of our screen. With Bird, it's even easier. Click and hold the home button and you get the desktop showing on the screen or the board. Okay, so here we have the desktop. Before we look at the GUI, just a little bit more of Bird in action. I'd like to show you some more of how we move things around with Bird from afar. I'll just navigate like we just spoke about. Double click right and left swiping right and down and go into Google Earth. So I'm gonna do that right now. I'll go into Google Earth. Here we go. And here we are. Okay, so here we could see, okay, I can, uh, I can zoom in, okay, and zoom out, okay. I can, okay, take it and, and move it around, okay. I just click and move my hand and seamlessly move it. And voila, if I go like this, okay, I could just um, use a gesture, which we'll talk about a little bit later, but okay, there we go. Um, we're gonna uh, talk about the gestures a little bit later, but I, you can see that we could do all of this and not be anywhere near a computer or anywhere near, um, near the screen. Okay, let's take a look at the GUI. I'm gonna go into it now. Okay, first of all, you're never more than three clicks away from where you need to go, and in most cases, even less. Let's get familiarized with the interface. Let's start at the top, okay? Here we see all of the connections. On the upper right, okay, we see the base unit, and it's, if it's connected or not, this little check mark tells me that the base unit is connected. And on the left, we see how many connected birds we've got, and I've got one connected bird right now. The active bird will have the circle filled in and connected, but the non-active ones are just gonna be outlines. At the right over here, this is gonna lead us, okay, over here, this is gonna lead us into the uh, advanced settings, which I'm gonna go into on the next slide. So remember when I said that videos can always be accessed at any time, a click on the support button will get us back to those videos, quick guides, and even a more personal support through opening a ticket. The apps button is very cool. From here, the user can get access to our recommended games and familiarize herself with the bird. Finally, in the middle of the home page, okay, what you're gonna have the first time you set up bird, and if you haven't done touch yet, it's gonna lead you to touch calibration, which is a four point calibration that takes just a few seconds. Because we already have touch, I don't have that there right now, but the time that we do this, the first time we do it, a video will appear automatically. So now let's drill down a bit and we'll see the submenus and what happens there. We start, okay, I'm gonna start by clicking here on the uh, settings menu, okay? One click gets us to these advanced settings. Now that we see our connections here, okay, we see again the connections up here, the base unit and the birds. We always see our settings no matter where we are in the menu, okay? So here we do our calibration, activate and deactivate gestures, control the sensitivity of multi motion control, and we can even personalize the bird to our own needs. Let's look at the types of calibration that we have access to, okay? So here I just click on the calibration, okay? So we've got touch calibration to uh, activate touch capabilities. This is the most important one. And a video explaining it is always available. You need to have the base unit facing this interactive area in order for your touch to work. So the base unit, which I'm gonna pick up right here, okay, I just happen to have one right here. The base unit um, has this bird icon on the back, okay? And when you press on it, you're gonna get a laser grid, okay, which you probably don't see here, and that's gonna show you the work area. The work area has to be in plain view of the base unit. So again, I touch right here, get that grid, and, the, and my work area has to be within the laser grid that comes up. Okay, now 
Another popular setting is the general settings. I'm gonna close calibration now and go to general settings. Why is it popular? It's where we can control our sensitivity, okay? We control the cursor sensitivity and the scroll sensitivity. Um, the cursor sensitivity is what controls the movement of the cursor on the screen when I move my hand around. And the scroll sensitivity is uh, just that. How, how sensitive it is to when I scroll up and down. So increasing the sensitivity here will make the bird more reactive and decreasing it will lower the sensitivity. We also control gestures in the software. So let's take a look at that. Um, I'm gonna open it now. Okay, so first of all, we can either turn them on or off. Okay, here I can, they've been on. I've been using them here and there. Turn them off, turn it back on. Okay, and we can decide that we wanna use, let's say, just left, or we wanna use left and up. So I can also control which ones are activated, and there you see, and which ones are not activated. So again, these calibrations are so-called advanced, and in some cases will be performed by an IT manager, but the truth is that even an everyday user should be able to perform these when necessary. Tech support is able to know when these are needed based on issues that users bring up in support tickets. And our tech support or your tech support will tell the user which calibration may be necessary to solve particular issues. Um, finally, okay, if we go down here, look over here at support, okay. A click on the support button at the bottom left of the home screen gets us back to these video tutorials. If we didn't use Bird for a while and we need to refresh ourselves, or if we need to set up Bird in a different venue or whatever, we have these short videos to help us. Um, we've got quick guides, we've got full guides, installation guides, any guides that you want can be downloaded. And the, these are more comprehensive than the videos. Some people prefer these. I suggest that you do print out the quick guide. It can be very handy. And finally, for people who need more specific or personal assistance, the ticket can be uh, open by clicking on contact us. Now, if you wanna make Bird as independent from other devices as possible. Um, teachers, business people, and presenters use Bird and sometimes need to type in short phrases, websites, URL addresses, or notes. A double click on the touchpad, okay, will open this virtual keyboard. Okay, we see it right here. So size and transparency are adjustable, and Bird remembers the settings. Now, you're not gonna write a novel or even an email with this keyboard, but when you need to get to that YouTube video, website, and you don't want to go back to the table and start typing, this is very convenient. You can also go to apps from the home page. You have links to games that have been tested for easy use with Bird. It allows you to become familiar with and get used to the way to using Bird in a fun way. So you can see that we've divided the games, okay, for how they help with learning Bird. Some are good for playing in air mouse mode, okay, others are good for touch. And the more advanced ones, okay, down here as I go down, let me just uh, move this uh, slider down here, okay. As we get down here, like running shadow, okay, these are actually good for using hand posture for controlling in short. Users, including yourselves, can start with the games towards the top of the list and move down to get more and more adept at using Bird and have a good time doing it. So here, for example, let's, uh, let's have a little fun. First of all, we give you directions, okay? We tell you what the swiping left and right, swiping up is for jumping, swiping down to slide under, and I'll play just for a few moments here. Not the best game player, but okay, I'll move back. And let's get this running, okay. Uh huh. Okay. So here we see a jump, okay, can move a little left, okay, move to the right, okay, went down, under, and I'll kill myself in a second just so I can, okay, I'm dead. I first wanna thank you all again for joining us today. Before we say goodbye, I wanna let you know that we would love to hear from you and how you're using Bird. Send us videos, pictures of you using Bird. Document how you use it and write to us how you're using Bird. If we can use your materials, we'll see to it that you'll be able to have multi-Bird functionality sooner than you may have planned. So if you're interested, email us at um, info at muvinteractive.com and we'll get back to you with more details. Thanks again for taking the time to join us today and enjoy your flight with Bird. <laughs>